So you want to learn about hue saturation? Well, let's get right into it and I'll show you how. But first, you're going to pick your image. Uh, you're going to want to pick something with a lot of colour in it and a lot of different variables which can go into the image. And once you've got this, you want to go to your adjustment Sophia and go to hue saturation. Once you've got this far, you're halfway to being done. What you want, you're going to be presented with this menu. This menu has three different options. Hue, which is the colour. Saturation, which is how much colour you want in the image. And lightness, which is how bright or dark you want the image. You have a little cog which shows all the different colours within the image. So if you want to pick a certain colour, you can. If you don't, you don't have to. Let's get straight into it. As you can see, if I move this, it changes mainly the blues. Down at the bottom of the image, down here, down at the bottom of the image, this has changed to blue, but this has also changed to red and the mountain range, but we've kept our whites. So this image has already dramatically changed. If I want to increase the saturation, it just makes it very, very oversaturated, which is something you want to avoid sometimes, unless that is the look you are going. If I reduce the saturation, it makes it quite dull, grey, black, brings out all the, the shadows and the highlights, but it's not as nice. So I usually go for about 20 to 30 saturation in the image just to sharpen the colours a bit. Maybe you want some lightness. In this image, I don't think it works as well because you can see at the top it creates a really hazy, horrible, broken effect. Maybe you want a bit of darkness. Darkness doesn't look too bad, but maybe you just want a tiny bit of lightness just to enhance that image a little bit. I'm going to undo this now. Now we'll go back to our blue image. Say I just want to change the blue of the image and keep the green. Well, by doing this, you would go down to the blues on the bar and then you would try to change the colour. Would you not? It doesn't work. Because look, it gives all this broken effect because it's not actually selected the right bits of the image. So if I undo that, go back to the blues, use this little eyedropper here and you can select the parts of the image you want to change. So if you just click and hover over all of the blue, it sh you don't have to do it individually, but just over the areas you want changed and then it should connect with what you want to do. So now I've done that, I'm gonna go over to my saturation and I'm gonna increase the color. Look at that, that is lovely. Now if I increase the saturation a bit, look at that, got a lovely red sky with a bit of a green little path and outline there and it works really well just for a basic color composition if you're just trying to show somebody an idea of what you want it to look like not a finalized image or if you are using it for a finalized image you just might need to refine it a bit more by doing little tricks like this beginner steps you are able to manipulate your images and actually completely change the outcome of what they will look like this is such an easy way of doing it and you really should get into touch with these adjustment layers because they are very simple and easy to use there are many of them this is a highly recommended one with uh, photographers and graphics designers because it changes the complete image and it's an easy way of adjusting color without having to individually select each item so if I undo this go back to this little button here if you click colorize and increase the saturation as you can see it's changed the whole image if you click colorize it changes the whole image to the color you select so if I want it all green it's all green back to the alien invasion again if you want it all blue a bit darker blue it's all blue by doing this you are able to create a very clean cut color composition overlaying the color over the whole image so if I unclick colorize maybe if I just want to change I don't know the greens and the pinks and I overlay this um, as you can see it creates a really nice effect maybe if I want to color dodge add by doing these you can change how the colour actually looks. Um, if you want to do a screen, it just makes it a really nice light effect. Uh, these, are, these are more adjustments I'll talk about in another video, but there is many different options you can play around with with Hue to make it blend very nice. Uh, that looks like the Northern Lights, the Vivid Light. Um, if you go down to Divide, it completely ruins the image. Different effects would work for different images. Soft light, that looks really nice, a bit of a cyan coming through the sky. Many different bits uh, come to together to make one image and um, by doing this you are able to enhance the images again I'm saying it again and again you can increase the amount of files you actually have in your arsenal to add to your um, your portfolio uh, to show people show clients 
you can increase it so quickly and maybe if it's at the last minute you can increase it really quick and you can get loads of different manipulations out and then you can show the clients and it looks like you've done a lot of work but really you've just been playing around with some togs on the top um, and reducing saturation and being an idiot like I am. Moving on to the next image, there's a lot of colour within this image, um, lots of colour. This is good, this is what you want for a hue, so if I go down to my adjustment sphere and I go to hue saturation in the middle, I can begin to start blending the image. Uh, if I just begin to change all the colours, we get quite a hazy effect, you can see it's quite sharp on the uh, hills, but overall it looks really nice. Now you've got a green haze over the hills and a lovely pink blending into a blue. If you increase the saturation, it completely ruins the image. So, as I said, it's finding the right mix between the image on what you want to create. The main main reason for this is to adjust small layers of colour, but you can also do it on large scale like this. If I turn this back to normal and I uh, select maybe the yellows, and I use our little, little eyedropper tool here and select all the yellow bit um, within the image, and now I want to change them. So now I can change them to a more green, like that. Obviously I didn't select the amount, so they're going to stay the same with the shadows. Maybe I want a pink or a red. Just by doing this I've created maybe a more likeable image. Uh, you may like it more now. Um, it depends on what you want. So if I go to the, maybe the reds now and go down here uh, down on select those there's not much red in here as you can see but there's probably highlights so if I change it now it's having that little effect so it's going green now and the blue is blending in with the haze obviously it's creating a very harsh contrast on the mountains but it still works these are just little tips and tricks that you'll need to learn to be able to effectively use these tools Maybe if I blend the mountain in like that, you can still see there's a little haze over the top. If I played around with this for a while, it would completely go and it would look like a professional made image. These are just little tips that will help you along your way uh, to becoming pro on Photoshop. Um, I'm not at all a pro, but I'm definitely learning as much as I can. And this is what you guys need to be doing who are watching this video and taking the time to learn these tricks. I will he I'm here to help. I will reply to your comments and I'll help you along the way because I know it's quite daunting learning these little tricks because it took me a while to be, able to, to be able to learn stuff like this. Even though they are the basic tasks, it still takes a while and that little bit of motivation and that push to do it will completely help. If I go back to the master and undo everything we've done, maybe reduce the lightness a bit, increase the saturation, create a bit of a, a nighttime effect, colours. See, look, now we've got that nice blend between the mountains. It's not so harsh, stuck out. But there's a bit of haze in the blue. It reduces saturation a little bit and then it creates quite a nice dark hazy image. So I haven't really changed the colours too much but I've been able to manipulate them so they're a bit more saturated and look better. That's all, I'm going to leave it there for that video. Uh, thank you for watching, please leave a comment, like and subscribe and let me know what you want to see in the future and I'll get on to it. Thank you so much for watching, see you next time.